Audhu billahi mina shaitanir rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh believers what we want to answer briefly is one you understand does prophet is does prophet is marriage to our respected imam the daughter of khalif abu bakari aisha you understand and also his marriage to the daughter of khalif umar hafsa does Prophet's marriage to them, you understand, make the father of our mother Aisha, who is Abu Bakari, and also the father of our mother Hafsa. Does it make them successors or the immediate successors after Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam? What I want to say: Does Prophet marrying, you understand? Does Prophet marrying the daughter of Khalif Abu Bakr and the daughter of Khalif Umar, does it make Abu Bakr and Umar to become the immediate successors of Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam? Because some people uh, say that uh, due to this marriage, therefore that's why Khalif Umar and uh, that's why uh, Khalif Abu Bakr and Khalif Umar uh, became immediate successors of Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam. That's what we want to answer briefly. Logic says, logic says that in case you have a daughter and she marries a president, you understand? In case you have a daughter and that daughter of yours gets married to maybe a president or maybe a king or any respected person in that community, it does not make the father of this daughter who has got married to a king, you understand? It does not make the father of this daughter has got married to a king to become a successor of that king or a vice president of that president the daughter has got married to that's logic to go further we don't have we don't find any verse in holy quran which say that a daughter you understand of someone got married to someone you understand and therefore the father of this daughter became a success of that person uh, of that person a daughter got married to. We don't find any verse in the Holy Quran. And we, don't, we, and we don't find even maybe any hadith speaking about so. You understand? What you want to say is one. The issues regarding becoming a successor or a prophet. The, what you want to say, the issues of becoming a prophet or a successor prophet. You understand? Some of the conditions in order for you to become a success or to become a prophet or a success of prophet, marriage is out. Marriage is not part of those conditions. We say the conditions are simple. Number one, you must be endorsed, elected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah Al-Kasos, verse number 68, وَرَبُّكَ يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاءُ وَيَخْتَالُ مَا كَنَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَرَ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَتَعَلَى مَا يُشْرِكُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one responsible for creating mankind and choosing for him. Man, you don't have any choice to do so. And if you do so, it will be as if you are committing shirik. Therefore, in case maybe after the death of Prophet Muhammad, some people went to Sakifa and elected among themselves, committed a great sin. Number two, we also said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses prophets and their successors. Even though their successors may not be prophets. We always give that example of King Talut. He became a successor or an ambassador, or a representative of Yusha Abu Nun, who came after Prophet Musa. But it's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who chose this king Talut. In case we are read Quranic chapter 2, verse number 247 to 248, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah has tafahun alaykum. You understand? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who chose him. You understand? And increased him. Uh, his knowledge and physics so that he can be a strong ambassador to Prophet Yusha Bunun. What we want to say there is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who chooses. Therefore, in case maybe you have a daughter and she gets married to a big person like a prophet, it does not make you a father of this daughter to become a successor of prophet or to become a successor of that person your daughter has got married to. We also find it in Holy Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions one good 
uh, incident which happened between Prophet Musa والسلام, and Prophet Shu'aib. You understand? We say that Prophet Shu'aib والسلام, had two daughters. You understand? Among them was Safra. It was Safra. Among them. Among those daughters. This Safra here, uh, Prophet Shu'aib والسلام, gave out to her to Prophet Musa والسلام, for marriage. But Prophet Shu'aib giving out his daughter to Prophet Musa والسلام, it never made him, it was not a condition for him. It was not a condition for Prophet Shu'aib to become a prophet. You understand? Therefore, prof, the daughter of Prophet Shu'aib getting married to Prophet Musa, it never made, it was not a condition for him to be a prophet. The condition was one. It is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who chose this person here, Prophet Shu'aib and Prophet Musa, to be prophets. Therefore, marriage, it was not a condition. You understand? For them to become a prophet. As we saw in Surah Al-Araf, verse number 85. It is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who chose him and sent him to Madian. Wa ila Madian akhahum Shu'aib. You understand? And Prophet Shu'aib, alayhi salatu wa salam, uh, was sent to Madian to guide mankind. Uh, and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qala ya qawmi, Then when he reached there, he said, Oh, my people, you have to uh, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and leave your shalik. Therefore, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who chose Prophet Shu'aib to become a prophet. It is not, he, it is not giving out his daughter to Prophet Musa, which made him to become a prophet. Allah is the one who chose him. Therefore, marriage is not a condition of uh, becoming a prophet or a successor of prophet. You may say that here is prophet to prophet. We say no problem. But as we saw that the successors succeed responsibilities of the late, you understand? In the case, because we say that successor succeeds, uh, succeeds you understand? the personalities of the late. In the case, you say that maybe Khalif Abu Bakari and Umaru, you understand, are the successors of Prophet. In the case, you say like that, they have also to inherit the personalities of the previous prophets. In the case, maybe there is no prophet or a success of Prophet who became a prophet after giving out his daughter to someone, therefore they must not also consider it as a condition for them to become successors of, of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallama. I think it's clear. In brief, we said it's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who chooses for mankind. And the condition is of, of uh, someone to become a prophet or his successor. Marriage is not among them as we saw in Surah Al-Anbiya verse number 73. That must be endorsed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Must be wa kan lana abidin, a successor of prophet. Or a prophet must not be a person who bowed down to idols even before becoming a Muslim. Therefore, he must be an infallible person. He must establish prayers and knows the values of Salah. That Salah prohibits you from evil. Inna Salah tatani hanil fashai wal munkan. As we saw in Salah Ankabut, verse number 45. You understand? That uh, that success of prophet must uh, not be a corrupter, as we saw in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse number 124, that Qala la ahad The promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choosing prophet and their successors does not extend the wrongdoers who commit uh, uh, and uh, who commit corruption to others. As we saw that some people, after the death of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, changed and also took the properties of a prophet's pure lineage, like the garden, of Fadaki. Therefore, we saw in brief that before the death of Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi wa alayhi wa sallam, left his will after the revelation of Quranic chapter uh, 5, verse number 67. Ya ayyuhar rasul balig ma unzila ilayka min rabbika, O you prophet, deliver that which has been delivered to you from your Lord. When Prophet was coming from his first and a farewell uh, pilgrimage, you understand, in a place called Gadil Khumi, that's where he appointed his successor uh, and he said, In Nitariku Fikum Thakalayni Kitab Allah. In the Tariq of Yukum Thakala in Kitab Allah, it's that I'm living among you two heavyweights. That's the Holy Quran and the pure lineage of Prophet Muhammad. We saw it in our previous 
lectures in our, even the tradition many tradition speaks about it that tradition is authentic uh, in uh, Sahih Muslim volume 2 page number 238 and we say that those who say that maybe Quran and Sunnah are the successor of Prophet Muhammad it is wrong the hadith is only reported by Muwatta uh, in Muwatta Al Malik and it has question mark regarding its uh, isnad we say that it also uh, we say that uh, these two uh, the Quran and hadith needs an interpreter a teacher and we say that person must be from in knowledge as we saw in Quran chapter 3 verse number 7 and those people must be albeit therefore the right rule of Prophet Muhammad was Quran and his pure lineage starting with Imam Ali Imam Hassan Imam Hussein alayhi salatu wasalam uh, Imam Hussein Imam Ali Zain Labidin alayhi salatu wasalam Imam Muhammad Bakil Imam Ja'far Sadiq alayhi salatu wasalam Imam Musa Kadhim Imam Ali Yurudha Imam Muhammad Jawad Imam uh, Imam uh, Imam Muttaqi alayhi salatu wasalam Imam Ali Al-Had alayhi salatu wasalam uh, Imam Ali Al-Had alayhi salatu wasalam Imam Hassan Al-Askal and Imam Muhammad Al-Mahdi ajala Allah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif, those are the right successors of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And the Imam of our time is Imam Muhammad al-Mahdi, ajalallahu ta'ala, faraja. Therefore, in case you have a daughter and you give your daughter to someone, it does not make you to become a successor of that person you've given your daughter to. So, that's it, briefly, and kindly keep sharing up to last person. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-hmm.